Live from Atlanta, 11 Alive News at 11.30 starts now. Catching up after the pandemic, Atlanta Public Schools implement a new system to help close the gap in students' education. But not everyone is on board. We'll have a live report. Plus, new developments in the Lake Lanier explosion over the weekend. We'll tell you how the victims are doing today. And Senator John Ossoff taking Georgia's election law fight to the Capitol, the bill he's introducing to Congress to take on SB 202. But first, we begin with new information today. Three people are in the hospital recovery covering from serious injuries after a boat explosion on Lake Lanier. Officials say two teens were airlifted and a 39 year old woman was driven to Grady to be treated. Witnesses took these pictures shortly after it happened Sunday afternoon, showing that white boat engulfed in flames and thick black smoke pummeling upward several tens of feet in the air. Officials say there are still questions about the cause, but we know the boat was fueling up at the Margaritaville gas docks when it exploded. Hall County Fire says another dock also caught fire when a jet ski floated away in all six people were injured. Staying on Lake Lanier now, a missing boater's body was recovered on Saturday. Georgia Department of Natural Resources and the Hall County Sheriff's Office say they found Anthony Saintilt Jr. of Stockbridge nearly 24 hours after he reportedly jumped off of a pontoon boat and never resurfaced. He was 23 years old. The remains of a missing woman from the metro area was found in St. Louis. Officials believe the remains found on a St. Louis roadway belonged to 33-year-old Tykesha Dixon of Roswell. Dixon and her husband, Luther Henderson, were reported missing back on May 8th. Officials say Luther is still missing. Agencies in at least two states are now working together to uncover what happened to Dixon. New details after a three-year-old girl was hit by a car in a parking lot over the weekend. Atlanta police tell us they arrived to a convenience store on Martin Luther King Jr. Drive yesterday afternoon to find her bleeding from a head injury. Police first reported that the driver left the scene, but an update today says the driver later returned and cooperated with police. At this time, no charges are expected to be filed. The little girl, we're happy to report, has non-life-threatening injuries. Well, the rain itself is now pushed a little bit further down to the south. We do have a few sprinkles overhead right now, but eh, other than that, clouds in place, folks. Mostly cloudy skies on the outside, and that's where it's going to stay for the rest of the afternoon. I am anticipating a few isolated showers to begin to pop up later this afternoon once we get into the daytime heating. Now, we will see a few of those isolated showers have some embedded thunderstorms in a few, but we're not anticipating any severe weather at all, just some isolated showers. Not everyone gets wet. But it is a dreary Monday for us. Temperatures are in the 70s in some spots. You got 74 degrees right now in Duluth. A little bit more sunshine over here toward the east. That's why you have Athens at 70, 70 also in Edenton, down to the south as well, down toward LaGrange and also into Thomaston. You got 70 degrees, 68 right now in Atlanta, 69 in Georgia's Rome, and 65 up in Blairsville at the current tower. Here's how it plays out. You notice after about 2 or 3 o'clock, we see these isolated showers beginning to pop up. Again, a few embedded thunderstorms are certainly possible. Maybe some gusty winds associated with it, but we're not anticipating severe weather at all. After 8 o'clock, a lot of those showers go away. So we'll catch a break through the overnight, but then more of those clouds will come right back to us. And we'll have some more rain push in for tomorrow as well, unfortunately. 77 degrees, our forecast high temperature will drop back down to 73 degrees by 7 o'clock tonight. Again, with the cloudy skies. It's going to stay unsettled for us for much of this week. I think the end of the week will be the best. We'll see if you agree with me in the full forecast coming up. Christy, back to you. Thank you, Chesley. Atlanta Public Schools alerting families about some changes for next year. Changes they say will help make up for lost learning during the pandemic. But one change has some parents and students so upset they've started a petition against it. Tracy A. McPeer joins us live from Grady High School to explain. Hey, Tracy. Hi there. Well, starting this fall, APS high schools will start class 45 minutes earlier than they do now at 745 rather than 830. And so far, more than a thousand people have signed a petition to fight back against that. Now, the petition actually started by a student cites the CDC claiming not getting enough sleep is common among high school students and is associated with several health risks, including being overweight, drinking alcohol, smoking tobacco and using drugs, as well as poor academic performance. The American Academy of Pediatrics has recommended that middle and high school start at 8.30 a.m. or later to give students the opportunity to get the amount of sleep they need. But most American adolescents start school too early. Now that petition goes on to say, we have followed the CDC's science carefully for the past year of COVID-19. There is no reason to stop now. 
We talked to some parents who agree with the petition, like Chris Spangler, who says this will be a logistical challenge at the very least. This is a typical sort of bureaucratic decision that didn't have parent or student input. Be, but I do think having a level of engagement with all the constituent parties would be a better first step than just you know, pushing out a ruling that just says we're going to extend it and it's going to go earlier. Now we reached out to APS and they say that this early start for high school is actually because of transportation issues. Once they added time to the elementary school day, all the bus route schedules had to shift. They say as of now, that start time for high schools will still remain at 745 in the morning. Mm, it's like a domino effect. All right, Tracy, thank you. Two more schools are going virtual because of COVID-19 cases. The Clayton County School District announced Mount Zion Primary School and Sequoia Middle School will switch back to virtual learning. It'll last through the end of the school year. Last week, the districts also reported cases at Callaway Elementary, Morrow Elementary, and Harper Elementary. All three schools are back to virtual learning for the rest of the year. The FDA may be just days away from authorizing Pfizer's COVID vaccine for kids 12 and older. And new results from Moderna's trial shows its vaccine is 96% effective for adolescents. But are the doses for kids the same as the shots people 16 and older are getting? Our national verify investigator Gabe Cohen explains. Kids 12 and up could be authorized for Pfizer's COVID vaccine next week. And a lot of parents have questions about the shots their kids will get. So let's verify. Will kids receive the same COVID vaccines as adults? Our sources, Pfizer, Moderna and Johnson and & Johnson and an infectious disease expert. Pfizer and Moderna have made it clear that kids 12 and up will receive the exact same two dose regimen as adults. A spokesperson for Pfizer tells me it's the same formulation and administered at the same level. Moderna spokesperson called theirs the same vaccine, same dose. Both companies started their adolescent trials months ago. Why wouldn't they need to modify the vaccine? Well, because immune systems of children are wonderfully responsive. Dr. William Schaffner is an infectious disease specialist at Vanderbilt University. The immune systems are not calibrated according to the size of the child. But Pfizer and Moderna may modify the dosage for children under 12. Those trials just started and they're still figuring out the right amount for each age group. Pfizer's standard dose is 30 micrograms, but for kids 2 to 11, they're testing 10 micrograms, then moving up to 20 and 30, depending on the age group's tolerance. They did the same thing during the adult trial. Moderna's strategy is similar. Their standard dose is 100 micrograms, but for children 2 to 11, they're testing 50 as well. And for kids under 2, they'll test 25 micrograms up to the full dose. The investigators, as they go down the age range, and of course, the children get smaller, are trying to adjust the doses so that the children get good protection, but keep the side effects to a minimum. Johnson & Johnson is well behind the other companies and just started their trial for children 12 and up. At this point, we don't know if they'll adjust the dosage for kids. So we can verify if they get Pfizer or Moderna's vaccines, kids 12 and older will get the exact same shots as adults, but children under 12 may receive smaller doses. Those younger kids are still months away from an authorized vaccine. With your Verify, I'm Gabe Cohen. Happening today at the Capitol, U.S. Senator John Ossoff is introducing the Voter Access to Water Act in the Senate today. He says it is a direct response to Georgia's voting legislation criminalizing nonpartisan volunteers from handing out water and food to voters in line. The state's new voting law makes it a misdemeanor, punishable by up to a year in jail. To criminalize a Good Samaritan nonpartisan volunteer providing a bottle of water to a voter who may be elderly, who may be disabled, who may have mobility challenges, who is being made to wait for hours in line outside of a polling place is wrong. And that's why this legislation that I'm introducing today will protect that act to ensure that Georgia voters, if they are made to wait in line to vote, will be able to receive for example, a bottle of water from a nonpartisan Good Samaritan volunteer at a polling place in Georgia. And let me just 
tell y'all a story. Senator Ossoff says he's working with other senators on Capitol Hill in order to get the legislation into the Fight for the People or For the People Act, ensuring the legislation will be in place before the next election cycle. Governor Brian Kemp will soon sign a repeal to the citizen's arrest law. The Civil War era law allows most residents to arrest someone they think committed a crime. The law came under fire after last year's killing of Ahmaud Arbery. Two of the three men charged with his murder told authorities they chased Arbery, who was jogging in South Georgia, because they believe he committed a crime. The State House and Senate passed the repeal by overwhelming margins after Arbery's killing. The repeal restricts the bystanders in Georgia from making an arrest if a crime is committed in their presence. It still provides for self-defense and allows business owners to detain suspected thieves. More testimony on the U.S. Capitol riot is expected in Washington, D.C. today. The Committee on House Administration will start its virtual hearing today on oversight of the January 6th attack. Capitol Police Inspector General Michael Bolton and the architect of the Capitol are expected to testify this week. Congress is still working to figure out how to move forward and prevent any future attacks. It's 1141 right now. When we come back, the cyber attack on the United States pipeline could have you paying more at the pump, who the government believes is behind this crippling attack. Health experts fear we're just at the start of another surge. Residents here are some of the first seniors to get the vaccine. This epidemic can come to an end. We do have a flash flood warning that just popped up here. And the fallout of this is just beginning. The bigger questions are the longer legal ramifications. Morning News should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with you. So connect with us. Talk to us. Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick, open your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Morning news should be informative and fun. Yeah, and we do that here on Morning Rush with Verify, Connect the Dots, Why Guy, and more. We love learning about new things and sharing them with you. We make the news make sense. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. The Negro people had to leave. They were told to get out. White only, no black! 1912, all but one issue has been erased. We haven't had none up here since the first of the century. What's the importance of making sure this history isn't erased? So that it doesn't happen again. Is your morning routine feeling a little routine? Then mix it up. Morning Rush is different. It's the fast-paced news you need with all the energy of your morning coffee. <laughs> Come see the difference on Morning Rush weekdays on 11 Alive. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the app's Pipeline problems continue this morning for Georgia-based operator Colonial Pipeline. The company has been forced to shut down after a cyber attack. The Alpharetta-based company operates more than 5,000 miles of pipeline from Texas to New York. It's one of the largest in the country. The Atlanta Fulton County Emergency Management Agency says the cyber attack could potentially lead to gas shortages in the area, but says there's no need to panic right now. If you've been to the pump, you've probably noticed gas prices have already been on the rise across the U.S. and they continue to go up, jumping nearly six cents per gallon in the last two weeks. The national average price for regular gas now sits around three dollars, two cents a gallon. And in Georgia, our prices are up a bit since last week. We're paying an average of two seventy six at the pump.
But who is behind the crippling cyber attack wreaking havoc on the U.S. pipeline, fueling nearly half of the East Coast? Officials say they may have a lead on the criminals behind the hack. Meanwhile, drivers are left wondering if or when this could cause prices at the pump to jump even more. NBC's Tom Costello has the latest. Yeah, good day. We are watching pump prices very, very closely. So far, no dramatic increase, but that could change any hour, any day. The longer that this pipeline that's run by Colonial Pipeline, the longer it's shut down, the greater the chances the gas prices will start to move up. This is the pipeline responsible for two and a half million barrels of jet fuel, of diesel fuel, and regular gasoline every single day, moving from Texas all the way up into New York and every state in between. 45% of East Coast fuel moves through this pipeline, shut down since Friday because of a ransomware attack. Cybersecurity experts and NBC News sources believe that this is the work of a sophisticated Russian criminal enterprise called Dark Side, and that they are demanding a ransom be paid before they unfreeze the pipeline. So we don't know how long it's going to take to get the pipeline reopened. Colonial Pipeline says it's working around the clock, and the government says it is all hands on deck. Multiple agencies working to not only help Colonial get the fuel moving again up the East Coast, but also tracking down more of who is responsible and trying to take their operations offline. It is, in the words of cybersecurity experts, a new front, a very uh, terrifying new front in how cyber criminals can literally take uh, infrastructure and critical infrastructure offline in the United States. 1146 at the time, and it's still cool on the outside with temperatures in the 60s. Got uh, cloudy skies. This is our live camera from Noonan. You can see where the skies are brightening up just a little bit. Some of those clouds thinning out down here to the south, but uh, still mostly cloudy skies. And that's the way it's going to be for the rest of the afternoon with a few sprinkles around. There'll be some isolated showers here and there, so be on the lookout, folks. Uh, not a whole lot going on right now. Again, you see a few breaks in the clouds, but those thicker clouds are back off to the west of us. They will continue to move in as well. We're tracking a front up here to the north that's going to continue to slide southward, but slowly. A little waves right along that and keep the chance for the rain in the forecast for today. The Wazometer is how we rate your weather on a scale from 1 to 11, with 11 being the most perfect day we can have for this time of year. Starting out the week with a 5, not great. 77 degrees for the afternoon high temperature. At least there's no severe weather around. You may recall this time uh, last week, boy, we had uh, even now dealing with uh, severe weather in the area with a couple of thunderstorms and tornadoes, but no, not this week. Most of your wet weather is uh, down to the south, and you can see some hefty thunderstorms over toward Louisiana along the panhandle of Florida. Uh, that's where that will stay. Even though the front is up here to the north, what will happen is that we'll see little waves like that area of low pressure right along that front because it's not really moving all that rapidly to the south. So we'll ride along that and keep the threat for the showers in the forecast. So you have the area of low pressure down here to the south. You see the rain down to the south as well. And as that starts to move up our way, we'll see a little better chance for that rain to move in. And I think by this afternoon, we could see some isolated showers pop up. But not looking for those to be on the severe side. Notice the light green shade over much of our state. That dark green is a level one out of a possible five. You got it up here too, as well over toward the Carolinas. Also, a slight uh, risk for severe weather here. For the light shade, it's just a zero out of possible five. So, just general thunderstorms are possible. So, and a few of those will be embedded in some of those isolated showers. Here's how it plays out for us in the forecast track model. You can follow along with the time right here at the top of the screen. It shows at least by, we'll say after one, two o'clock, we can see some of these isolated showers popping up. Now, not everyone gets wet from this. And inside of these, see what you can see these little yellows in here. There could be a few thunderstorms here and there. We're really watching that front to see where it lines up uh, because as those areas of low pressure ride along that that's going to increase or decrease our chance for the rain. I think we start off with the rain in the morning on Tuesday, but then that starts to sink a little bit further down to the south by Tuesday afternoon. And then on Wednesday morning, we'll see it again. We'll see it up here to the north. You can see where we have a few scattered showers around, but by the time we get to the afternoon, a lot of that will start to wind down. And even some clearing taking place and some drier air will begin to work in as we go to Wednesday evening. And then by Thursday, although Thursday will be mostly cloudy, our rain, our chance for rain is very low on Thursday. We're down to a 20% chance. Best day of the week, I'm thinking, is Friday. Partly to mostly sunny skies, 73 degrees for the high, and a beautiful weekend, as you can see, with temperatures getting back up close to 80 degrees. Christy? An 11 Alive viewer has seen housing prices in her neighborhood skyrocket, so she reached out to our Y guy to find out what is going on. Jerry Carnes has some answers when we come back questions are the longer legal ramifications.
news should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with you. So connect with us. Talk to us. Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick, open your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Morning news should be informative and fun. Yeah, and we do that here on Morning Rush with Verify, Connect the Dots, Why Guy, and more. We love learning about new things and sharing them with you. We make the news make sense. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. The Negro people had to leave. They were told to get out. White only, no black! 1912, all but one issue has been erased. We haven't had none up here since the first of the century. What's the importance of making sure this history isn't erased? So that it doesn't happen again. Is your morning routine feeling a little routine? Then mix it up. Morning Rush is different. It's the fast-paced news you need with all the energy of your morning coffee. <laughs> Come see the difference on Morning Rush weekdays on 11 Alive. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponce, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs> If you're thinking of moving into a new home, prepare yourself for sticker shock. An 11 Alive viewer reached out to our Y guy wondering why prices in her metro Atlanta neighborhood have skyrocketed. Here is Jerry Carnes to explain. The heat you're feeling isn't from the weather. The demand for housing is on fire, sending prices through the roof. Homes are snatched off the market within hours. Nearly half of all Americans who put their home up for sale are getting considerably more than their asking price. 11 Live viewer Debbie Daniels Dawson wonders what's going on. People are buying up the houses and you know taxes are to come. On Debbie's behalf, we reached out to experts in real estate and finance to find out what's happening. It began over a decade ago during the Great Recession when home building ground to a halt. There was about three or four years when there was very little building activity going on. So we missed adding to the stock of houses at that point. Home building slowed again during the pandemic, further limiting the supply as millennials entered the housing market. The pandemic slowed the production of products needed to build homes, while do-it-yourself projects kept demand high. The price of lumber has nearly tripled over the past year. It's everything. It's copper prices, aluminum, steel, lumber, just everything involved with construction. Uh, is getting super expensive. Then there are the interest rates on home loans that have experienced record lows, encouraging even more people into the market. Those are crazy low rates. So anybody who has got the ability to qualify, it, it's much easier to qualify than, than it was. A Realtor.com survey holds encouraging news for home buyers. Many wary of listing their home during the pandemic are getting ready to do just that. There are others, however, who say they can't sell because they can't find a new place to live in their price range. 
And here is a quick look at the housing market in Atlanta. New data from S&P Dow Jones shows a 10% increase in home prices in Atlanta from February of 2020 to February of this year. Researchers say this is one of the largest increases since 1990. Remax recently reported that the median selling price in Atlanta is $309,000. The agency also reports that homes are on the market for an average of 31 days. The national average is 38. When we come back, cheating at the Kentucky Derby, this year's winner failed the post-race drug test. Up next, how this could potentially change the results of the race and what it means for famed trainer Bob Baffert. Days on 11 Alive. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on the ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dive. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponce, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help your commute. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. We're quite the combo. <laughs> Weather changes can make or break your day. That's why the 11 Alive Storm Trackers are always watching what's coming next. Delivering accessible and accurate forecasts that prepare you, not scare you. The Storm Trackers, only on 11 Alive. COVID-19 is still spreading in Georgia. Now get facts, not fear, at 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Track cases by county using our interactive map and get the latest health department data. Visit 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Health experts fear we're just at the start of another surge. Residents here are some of the first seniors to get the vaccine. This epidemic can come to an end. We do have a flash flood warning that just popped up here. And the fallout of this is just beginning. The bigger questions are the longer legal ramifications. Morning news should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with you. So connect with us. Talk to us. Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick, open your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street-level zoom, and severe weather. We are 74 days out. Organizers for the Olympic Games have been testing out some COVID safety measures. Tokyo's Olympic Stadium held a track and field test event yesterday with no fans in the stands. They used the event to fine tune some COVID safety protocols. Hundreds of athletes participated, including American sprinter Justin Gatlin. The gold medalist won the 100 meter test event. A huge title is on the line after the winning horse in the Kentucky Derby failed a drug test. Medina Spirit tested above the legal limit for an anti-inflammatory drug. And the horse's Hall of Fame trainer has been suspended indefinitely from Churchill Downs. Trainer Bob Baffert says he didn't know why Medina Spirit would have tested positive for the drug and says he feels wronged. Now Medina Spirit has to undergo another drug test before any final decision is made. But if the findings are upheld, the runner-up Mandaloon will be declared the winner of the Kentucky Derby.
The Hawks are getting ready for a final push toward hopefully making the playoffs. Their last four games are all at State Farm Arena, starting with the Wizards tonight. Theoretically speaking, they have the easiest remaining schedule of anyone in the NBA, so there's hope there. Potentially, getting DeAndre Hunter back is huge, but so is the thought of making the playoffs for the first time since 2017. Now, they haven't clinched it yet, but that is their one focus. Live from Atlanta, 11 Alive News at noon starts now. Catching up after the pandemic, Atlanta Public Schools implement a new system to help close the gap in their students' education. But not everyone is on board. We'll have a live report. Plus, new developments in the Lake Lanier explosion from over the weekend. We'll tell you how the victims are doing today. And Senator John Ossoff taking Georgia's election law fight to the Capitol. The bill he's introducing to Congress to take on SB 202. But first, we begin with new information today. Three people are in the hospital recovering from serious injuries after a boat exploded on Lake Lanier. Officials say two teens were airlifted and a 39-year-old woman was driven to Grady to be treated. Witnesses took these pictures shortly after it happened Sunday afternoon, showing that white boat engulfed in flames several feet high and all of that black smoke pummeling up in the air. Officials say there are still questions about the cause, but we know the boat was fueling up at the Margaritaville gas docks when it exploded. Hall County Fire says another dock also caught fire. In all, six people were injured. Staying on Lake Lanier, a missing boater's body was recovered Saturday. Georgia Department of Natural Resources and the Hall County Sheriff's Office says they found Anthony Saintel Jr. of Stockbridge nearly 24 hours after he reportedly jumped off of a pontoon boat and never resurfaced. He was 23 years old. The remains of a missing woman from the metro area was found in Illinois. Officials believe the remains found in Edwardsville, Illinois, early Saturday morning belonged to 33-year-old Tykesha Dixon of Roswell. Dixon and her husband Luther Henderson were reported missing back on May 8th. Officials say Luther is still missing. Agencies in at least two states are now working together to uncover what happened. New details this uh, midday after a three year old girl was uh, hit by a car in a parking lot over the weekend. Atlanta police tell us they arrived to a convenience store on Martin Luther King Jr. Drive yesterday afternoon to find her bleeding from a head injury. Police first reported that the driver left the scene, but an update today says the driver later returned and did cooperate with police. At this time, no charges are expected to be filed. The little girl we're happy to report has non life threatening injuries. Well, we're going to have to deal with some clouds. We're going to have to deal with some rain over the next couple of days, not just this afternoon, but for the next couple of days. Showing you this wide photo because we have most of the rain, the heavy rain down to the south, well south of us right now, and light uh, showers over us, but more of it will come back. We're looking at light showers for the rest of the afternoon. There'll be a, some embedded thunderstorms possible as we head through the afternoon. But for the most part, we're just going to have isolated showers around. So not everyone gets wet, but be on the lookout for it just in case you're going to be out for this afternoon. Now, temperatures are warming up on the south side and over toward the east. 71 degrees in Clayton. Look at the 71 in Athens, 70 in Edenton, 72 down in Thomaston, right on the cusp of 70 in Atlanta. You're at 69 degrees, 68 over in Carrollton, 68 also in Rome and up toward Dalton at the current tower. So here's how our forecast track model plays it out for us. I think after about one or two o'clock is when we'll start to see some of these isolated showers popping up. Now we will see an embedded thunderstorm in a few of those, but we're not looking at anything on the severe side. You may get a gusty wind or two with it, but that'll be it. After eight, that all starts to diminish. Even the clouds start to break up just a little bit, but more of those clouds will come right back to us as we head into the day tomorrow. Tuesday brings on another chance for rain. It's low, but brings on another chance for rain. So 73 degrees by noon today. We're looking at uh, 77 uh, for an afternoon high today. Back down to 73 degrees by 7 o'clock tonight with cloudy skies. Christy, back to you. Atlanta Public Schools alerting families to some changes for next year. Changes they say will help make up for lost learning during the pandemic. But one change has some parents and students so upset they have started a petition against it. Tracy A. McPeer joins us live from Grady High School to explain. Well, starting this fall, APS high schools will start class 45 minutes earlier than they do now at 745 rather than 830. And so far, more than a thousand students and parents are so mad they're actually signing a petition to fight back against that. Now, the petition was started by a student and cites the CDC claiming not getting enough sleep is common among high school students and is associated with several health risks, including being overweight, drinking alcohol, smoking tobacco and 
and using drugs, as well as poor academic performance. The American Academy of Pediatrics has recommended that middle and high schools start at 8.30 a.m. or later to give students the opportunity to get the amount of sleep they need, but most American adolescents start school too early. The petition goes on to say, we have followed the CDC science carefully for the past year of COVID-19. There is no reason to stop now. Now we talked to some parents who agree with the petition, like Chris Spangler, who says this will be a logistical challenge at the very least. This is a typical sort of bureaucratic decision that didn't have parent or student input. But I do think having a level of engagement with all the constituent parties would be a better first step than just you know, pushing out a ruling that just says we're going to extend it and it's going to go earlier. Now we reached out to APS and they say that this early start time for a high school is actually because of transportation issues. Once APS added some hours or some time rather to the elementary school day, all the bus schedules had to shift. As of now, the start time for high school remains at 7:45 a.m. starting next fall. Yeah, you change one and it's a domino effect for the rest. Thank you, Tracy. Two more schools are going virtual because of COVID-19 cases. The Clayton County School District announced Mount Zion Primary School and Sequoia a middle school will switch back to virtual learning and it will last through the end of the school year. Last week, the districts also reported cases at Callaway Elementary, Morrow Elementary and Harper Elementary. All three schools are back to virtual learning for the rest of the year. The FDA may be just days away from authorizing Pfizer's COVID vaccine for kids 12 and older and new results from Moderna's trial shows its vaccine is 96% effective for adolescents. But are the doses for kids the same as the shots that people 16 and older are getting? Our National Verify investigator Gabe Cohen explains. Kids 12 and up could be authorized for Pfizer's COVID vaccine next week. And a lot of parents have questions about the shots their kids will get. So let's verify. Will kids receive the same COVID vaccines as adults? Our sources, Pfizer, Moderna and Johnson and & Johnson and an infectious disease expert. Pfizer and Moderna have made it clear that kids 12 and up will receive the exact same two dose regimen as adults. A spokesperson for Pfizer tells me it's the same formulation and administered at the same level. Moderna spokesperson called theirs the same vaccine, same dose. Both companies started their adolescent trials months ago. Why wouldn't they need to modify the vaccine? Well, because immune systems of children are wonderfully responsive. Dr. William Schaffner is an infectious disease specialist at Vanderbilt University. The immune systems are not calibrated according to the size of the child. But Pfizer and Moderna may modify the dosage for children under 12. Those trials just started and they're still figuring out the right amount for each age group. Pfizer's standard dose is 30 micrograms, but for kids 2 to 11, they're testing 10 micrograms, then moving up to 20 and 30, depending on the age group's tolerance. They did the same thing during the adult trial. Moderna's strategy is similar. Their standard dose is 100 micrograms, but for children 2 to 11, they're testing 50 as well. And for kids under 2, they'll test 25 micrograms up to the full dose. The investigators, as they go down the age range, and of course the children get smaller, are trying to adjust the doses so that the children get good protection, but keep the side effects to a minimum. Johnson & Johnson is well behind the other companies and just started their trial for children 12 and up. At this point, we don't know if they'll adjust the dosage for kids. So we can verify if they get Pfizer or Moderna's vaccines, kids 12 and older will get the exact same shots as adults, but children under 12 may receive smaller doses. Those younger kids are still months away from an authorized vaccine. With your Verify, I'm Gabe Cohen. If there is something you want us to verify, send us an email at verify at 11alive.com. You can also text the word verify to 404-885-7600. Here's a quick look at where Georgia stands when it comes to vaccinations. According to the Georgia Department of Public Health, 36% of people in the state have received at least one dose, while only 28% are considered fully vaccinated. CDC data shows we are lagging behind the national average. More than 45% of people across the U.S. have received one shot, and more than 34% are now fully vaccinated.
For more than a year, we've been hearing that herd immunity is the goal to get us back to normal life. So what has changed? Mara Sirianni set out to answer that question. It's been more than a year. You've washed your hands, stayed away from big crowds. You've even been vaccinated. So why does the finish line still seem so far away? The, the goalposts, uh, I think, are ultimately uh, set by us. By Piedmont Health's Dr. Jesse Kauk specializes in infectious diseases. He says, at least in Georgia, community spread is still too high. Uh, we do have a, a lot of people over the age of 65, for example, vaccinated, and that has decreased the mortality. But that means that the people in hospitals now are younger. But Kauk says herd immunity is not a clear line. Early on, health experts estimated the target threshold would be about 60 to 70 percent of the U.S. population. Those calculations were based on the contagiousness of the original version of the virus. Kauk says variants have changed the landscape. Most of the uh, SARS coronavirus 2 in Georgia uh, right now is the B117 variant, the more transmissible variant that was first identified in the UK. Despite Georgia's mass vaccination sites closing, last week Governor Kemp called on community leaders to continue to encourage folks to get vaccinated. We need leaders in the local community, in our religious organizations, you know, in people in sports, um, community leaders. If you're at home and you're waiting for things to, to get back to normal, but you yourself are not vaccinated, just realize that uh, you're waiting for yourself. Happening today at the U.S. Capitol, U.S. Senator John Ossoff is introducing the Voters Access to Water Act in the Senate today. He says it is a direct response to Georgia's voting legislation criminalizing nonpartisan volunteers from handing out water and food to voters in line. The state's new voting law makes it a misdemeanor punishable by up to a year in jail. To criminalize a good Samaritan nonpartisan volunteer providing a bottle of water to a voter who may be elderly, who may be disabled, who may have mobility challenges, who's being made to wait for hours in line outside of a polling place is wrong. And that's why this legislation that I'm introducing today will protect that act to ensure that Georgia voters, if they are made to wait in line to vote, will be able to receive, for example, a bottle of water from a nonpartisan Good Samaritan volunteer at a polling place in Georgia. And let me just tell you Senator Ossoff says he is working with other senators so on Capitol Hill in order to get the legislation into the well For the People Act, ensuring the legislation the will be in place before the next election cycle. Governor Brian Kemp will sign the citizen's arrest bill into law. It aims to repeal a Civil War era law, allowing most people to arrest someone they think committed a crime. The law came under fire after last year's killing of Ahmaud Arbery. Two of the three men charged with his murder told authorities they were chasing Arbery, who was jogging in South Georgia, because they believe he committed a crime. More testimony on the U.S. Capitol riot is expected in Washington, D.C. today. The Committee on House Administration will start its virtual hearings today on oversight of the January 6th attack. Capitol Police Inspector General Michael Bolton and the architect of the Capitol are expected to testify this week. Congress is still working to figure out how to move forward and prevent any future attacks. It is 12 minutes past the hour. Still ahead, a cyber attack on the U.S. pipeline could have you paying more at the pump. Who the government believes is behind this crippling attack. Make or break your day. That's why the 11 Alive Storm Trackers are always watching what's coming next. Delivering accessible and accurate forecasts that prepare you, not scare you. The Storm Trackers, only on 11 Alive. COVID-19 is still spreading in Georgia. Now get facts, not fear, at 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Track cases by county using our interactive map and get the latest health department data. Visit 11alive.com slash COVID numbers. Health experts fear we're just at the start of another surge. Residents here are some of the first seniors to get the vaccine. This epidemic can come to an end. We do have a flash flood warning that just popped up here. And the fallout of this is just beginning. The bigger questions are the longer legal ramifications. Morning news.
you should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with you. So connect with us. Talk to us. Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick, open your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Morning news should be informative and fun. Yeah, and we do that here on Morning Rush with Verify, Connect the Dots, Why Guy, and more. We love learning about new things and sharing them with you. We make the news make sense. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. The Negro people had to leave. They were told to get out. White only, no black! 1912, all but one issue has been erased. We haven't had none up here since the first of the century. What's the importance of making sure this history isn't erased? So that it doesn't happen again. Is your morning routine feeling a little routine? Then mix it up. Morning Rush is different. It's the fast-paced news you need with all the energy of your morning coffee. <laughs> Come see the difference on Morning Rush weekdays on 11 Alive. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed. Pipeline problems continue today for Georgia-based operator Colonial Pipeline. The company has been forced to shut down after a cyber attack. The Alpharetta-based company operates more than 5,000 miles of pipeline from Texas all the way up to New York. It's one of the largest in the country. The Atlanta Fulton County Emergency Management Agency says this cyber attack could potentially lead to gas shortages in the area, but also says there's no need to panic right now. Gas prices have already been on the rise across the U.S. You probably noticed that if you filled up anytime soon. And they continue to go up, jumping nearly six cents per gallon in the last two weeks. The national average price for regular gas now sits around three dollars, two cents a gallon. And in Georgia, our price is also up a bit since last week even. We're paying an average of two seventy six at the pump. But who is behind this crippling cyber attack wreaking havoc on the U.S. pipeline, fueling nearly half of the East Coast? Officials say they may have a lead on the criminals behind the hack. Meanwhile, drivers are left wondering if or when this will cause prices to jump even more at the pump. NBC's Tom Costello has the latest. Yeah, good day. We are watching pump prices very, very closely. So far, no dramatic increase, but that could change any hour, any day. The longer that this pipeline that's run by Colonial Pipeline, the longer it's shut down, the greater the chances the gas prices will start to move up. This is the pipeline responsible for two and a half million barrels of jet fuel, of diesel fuel and regular gasoline every single day, moving from Texas all the way up into New York and every state in between. 45% of East Coast fuel moves through this pipeline, shut down since Friday because of a ransomware attack. Cybersecurity experts and NBC News sources believe that this is the work of a sophisticated Russian criminal enterprise called Dark Side, and that they are demanding a ransom be paid before they unfreeze the pipeline. So we don't know how long it's going to take to get the pipeline reopened. Colonial Pipeline says it's working around the clock, and the government says it is all hands on deck. Multiple agencies working to not only help Colonial get the fuel moving again up the East Coast, but also tracking down more of who is responsible and trying to take their operations offline. It is, in the words of cybersecurity experts, a new front, a very uh, terrifying new front in how cyber criminals can literally take uh, infrastructure and critical infrastructure offline in the United States. Clouds, clouds everywhere. A little bit of rain coming out of those clouds as well. But um, not up here in Blue Ridge. You can see we do have mostly cloudy skies. Looks ominous too, right there in the background. Look at that. Uh, but no rain, not yet. Uh, some isolated showers certainly possible as we head through the afternoon. Haven't seen very many people out. Normally about this time, especially when we have the sun, you see people just kind of scampering along there. Maybe folks aren't afraid to go out because of the rain. Don't want to get wet. Well, yeah, there is the possibility that we'll see some. I mean, here we are in Blue Ridge up here and notice just clouds. 
we had a few showers, actually some heavy rain through the overnight that has now pushed a little bit further down to the south. So we're just dealing with the clouds right now. But I'm expecting after about one o'clock, we'll start to see some of those isolated showers beginning to pop up again. Not much right now. Even a few breaks. We've seen them over here toward the east and it's allowed the temperatures to really start to warm up. We're in that May time frame now. A little bit of sunshine is all you need to get those temperatures right on up there. Five out of a possible 11 on the bosometer. It's how we rate your weather on a scale from one to 11, with 11 being the most perfect day we can have for this time of year. Going to give it a five because of the cloud cover and the percentage or the chance for rain. Looking at a 50% chance for some isolated or scattered showers to pop up. 77 our forecast high temperature today and some spots already in the 70s, especially over toward the east like Athens down to the south. Thomaston, you're in the 70s already, so we'll start to heat it up a little bit despite the fact that we have mostly cloudy skies on the outside. Any severe weather that we see today will be well south of us. You can see some of those thunderstorms now over toward New Orleans, Panhandle, Florida, and then up here toward uh, the Carolinas. We could see a little bit of uh, uh, severe weather there. None for us today. We're tracking this front here that is slowly, and I mean slowly, making its way down to the south. So this could be the trigger for those showers. You get little waves that ride along typically a stationary boundary or a slow moving boundary like this one. And as those waves move through, the chance for rain starts to go up a little bit. So right now, that area of low pressure down there to the south has the rain down to the south. Uh, you can see where we have this dark shade area here. Uh, it extends through Jackson and into Dallas, Texas, Houston. That's where we have a marginal risk for severe weather. That's a level one out of a possible five. For us, that light green shade just means uh, general thunderstorms are expected. Zero out of possible five. Up in the Carolinas where you have that uh, slight and marginal risk there. A few embedded thunderstorms are certainly possible. For the most part, we'll just see the showers. Here's how it plays out for us in the forecast track model. It shows those isolated showers popping up. Some embedded thunderstorms are certainly possible. You notice that the model places more of that rain down here to the south by the time we get toward the five, six o'clock hour assuming maybe that the front will start to slide a little bit further down to the south. Now, I think it gets hung up just a little bit to the north. Because of that, we're going to keep the rain in the forecast. Um, now, after 7 o'clock tonight, I think we'll go with just mostly cloudy skies. Tomorrow morning, we still have the clouds in place, but there will be a few, still a few isolated showers around. Front continues to sag further to the south. Notice a few breaks briefly in the activity uh, during the afternoon. Then here comes more rain, especially once we get toward Wednesday morning. You notice some widespread rain around by Wednesday afternoon that begins to break down. And so we'll hold on to the clouds as we head into Thursday as well. But our chance for rain starts to go down a little bit, down to about a 20% chance. And then we'll start to see more of that sunshine toward the end of the week. In fact, I think the best day of the week will wind up being on Friday, partly to mostly sunny skies. 73 degrees will be the high temperature and the upcoming weekend looks nice for now as well. We've got 11 live day there on Saturday, 78 and then back up to 80 by next Sunday with mostly sunny skies. Christy, back over to you. Thank you, Chesley. It's 1221 right now and 11, 11 Alive viewer has seen housing prices in her neighborhood skyrocket. She reached out to our Y guy to find out what is going on. Jerry Carnes has some answers next. For legal ramifications. Morning news should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with you. So connect with us. Talk to us. Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick, open your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Morning news should be informative and fun. Yeah, and we do that here on Morning Rush with Verify, Connect the Dots, Why Guy, and more. We love learning about new things and sharing them with you. We make the news make sense. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. The Negro people had to leave. They were told to get out. White only, no black! 1912, all but one issue has been erased. We haven't had none up here since the first of the century. What's the importance of making sure this history isn't erased? So that it doesn't happen again. Is your morning routine feeling a little routine? Then mix it up. Morning Rush is different. It's the fast-paced news you need with all the energy. If you're thinking of moving into a new home, go ahead and prepare yourself for that sticker shock. An 11 Alive viewer reached out to our Y guy wondering why prices in her metro Atlanta neighborhood have skyrocketed. Here's Jerry Carnes to explain. 
The heat you're feeling isn't from the weather. The demand for housing is on fire, sending prices through the roof. Homes are snatched off the market within hours. Nearly half of all Americans who put their home up for sale are getting considerably more than their asking price. 11 Live viewer Debbie Daniels Dawson wonders what's going on. People are buying up the houses and you know taxes are to come. On Debbie's behalf, we reached out to experts in real estate and finance to find out what's happening. It began over a decade ago during the Great Recession when home building ground to a halt. There was about three or four years when there was very little building activity going on, so we missed adding to the stock of houses at that point. Home building slowed again during the pandemic, further limiting the supply as millennials entered the housing market. The pandemic slowed the production of products needed to build homes, while do-it-yourself projects kept demand high. The price of lumber has nearly tripled over the past year. It's everything. It's copper prices, aluminum, steel, lumber, just everything involved with construction uh, is getting super expensive. Then there are the interest rates on home loans that have experienced record lows, encouraging even more people into the market. Those are crazy low rates. So anybody who has got the ability to qualify, it's much easier to qualify than, than it was. A Realtor.com survey holds encouraging news for home buyers. Many wary of listing their home during the pandemic are getting ready to do just that. There are others, however, who say they can't sell because they can't find a new place to live in their price range. Here is a quick look at the housing market in Atlanta. New data from S&P Dow Jones shows a 10% increase in home prices in Atlanta from February of 2020 to February of this year. Researchers say this is one of the largest increases since 1990. Remax recently reported that the median selling price in Atlanta is $309,000. The agency also reports that homes are on the market for an average of 31 days. The national average is 38. When we come back, Freddie Freeman not striking out for Mother's Day, the gift that kept on giving at yesterday's game. Morning news should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with you. So connect with us. Talk to us. Think of it as a conversation. Morning Rush weekdays, 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Quick. Open your phone camera right now, aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Morning news should be informative and fun. Yeah, and we do that here on Morning Rush with Verify, Connect the Dots, Why Guy, and more. We love learning about new things and sharing them with you. We make the news make sense. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. The Negro people had to leave. They were told to get out. White only, no black! 1912, all but one issue has been erased. We haven't had none up here since the first of the century. What's the importance of making sure this history isn't erased? So that it doesn't happen again. Is your morning routine feeling a little routine? Then mix it up. Morning Rush is different. It's the fast-paced news you need with all the energy of your morning coffee. <laughs> Come see the difference on Morning Rush weekdays on 11 Alive. Weather can't run from the all-new 11 Alive Thunder Truck, a mobile weather center with the power and speed to chase down the strongest storms and bring you on-the-ground conditions. The 11 Alive Thunder Truck, sponsored by Landmark Dodge. Here in Atlanta, bad weather means bad traffic. A few drops of rain could destroy a commute. But that's where my man Crash Clark comes in. I go street level, he goes next level. Together, we make sure you get to work on time. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 on 11 Alive. Hey, quick, open up your phone camera right now. Aim it at the screen to download 11 Alive's new and improved app. This QR code will take you right to the App Store or Google Play. One simple tap gives you enhanced radar, street level zoom, and severe weather alerts. It's just that easy. Atlanta roads are my thing. ITP, OTP, Ponce, Piedmont, all the peach trees. Combined with Chesley's street level forecast, that's a lot of tech and experience to help. We leave you with a little Mother's Day spirit from Brave Star Freddie Freeman. He knew exactly what he wanted to give his wife this Mother's Day, and he delivered. What Mother's Day plans do you have for Chelsea? 
hopefully a home run. We'll, we'll, we'll go for that. Maybe we should like that. Mm, well, uh, he delivered. Hopefully he also got her some flowers too, but on the very first pitch, Freeman uses his pink Mother's Day bat to send it over the center field wall and into the seats for a home run. Yeah, she's clapping for him there. The Braves also gifting their fans with a five to one win. So on Mother's Day, everybody wins. Thanks to the Braves. All right, thanks so much for watching 11 Alive News at noon. I'm Christy Diaz, stay safe. Health experts fear we're just at the start of another surge. Residents here are some of the first seniors to get the vaccine. This epidemic can come to an end. We do have a flash flood warning that just popped up here. And the fallout of this is just beginning. The bigger questions are the longer legal ramifications. Morning news should be both informative and fun. Gone are the days where we're speaking at you. On Morning Rush, we're speaking with.